Sheepwash is a tiny village in North Devon with a population of just 250 or so people. And the Sheepwash Chronicle is the local magazine for and about the residents. It's not what you might call the mainstream media. Now, I have some close family ties down here, and as a result, I visit quite often. And I was, last time I was down here, I stumbled across an article in the Harvest 2021 edition that I think might be the best article I've ever read about green energy and our future electricity needs. And so I thought I'd bring some attention to it with this vlog. It's by Dr. Philip Bratby of the Countryside Charity and it's called Small Modular Reactors, an opinion piece, the ultimate low carbon renewables. Now, unfortunately, the energy debate is no longer about what is the cleanest, most efficient energy source. The debate has been politicized and corrupted by those with their snouts in the trough of government subsidy. And so anyone who suggests that fossil fuels have done a lot for mankind or that nuclear power might not be all bad is immediately branded a heretic. But I should say the author, Philip Bratby, is pro-nuclear. And there's a link in the comments if you want to read the article in full. So I googled Bratby after I read the article and there isn't much online. He has a first class honours degree in physics from uh, the Imperial College of Science and Technology, London University, and a doctorate in physics from Sheffield University. He worked in the military and in the civil nuclear industry as an energy consultant and is now semi-retired. Anyway, I'm going to summarise the article here. If the government has its way, says Bratby, we will need much more electricity for heating and charging all those millions of electric vehicles. To meet these needs, the electricity supply will need to be expanded and become much more reliable. Commercial nuclear power stations have been operating for nearly 70 years. They've provided huge amounts of reliable and affordable, clean and almost infinitely renewable electricity. Nuclear energy has the best safety record of any energy technology and all the environmental concerns such as waste disposal have been solved. So, he asks, why hasn't nuclear power been widely accepted? And one reason is that for many years, environmental activists have persuaded much of the public, many politicians and the media, that nuclear is unsafe. However, some activists, I can't get this gate open, have recently changed their minds. For example, James Lovelock, the author of Gaia Theory, has said that nuclear power is the only green solution. Bryony, now Baroness Worthington, a lead author of the Climate Change Act, who once said that she was passionately opposed to nuclear power, has more recently said of it, I urge you on moral, ethical, scientific and environmental grounds to rethink your opposition to it. And one time anti-nuclear campaigner and environmental activist author Mark Linus, who said that he grew up hating nuclear power, has now said that continuing to oppose nuclear was a mistake, it's extraordinarily safe, and we must learn to love nuclear power. So, why do some environmental organisations still oppose it and prefer environmentally destructive wind and solar farms coupled with batteries? And the reason, says Bratby, is not that it doesn't produce abundant low carbon energy, but that it does. And that conflicts with their aim to halt economic growth. Now, this is me speaking, Dominic, and I think there's a lot of truth to that statement. There are many who feel that this urge, this urge to control others, to stop them progressing, and I often feel that that's the, the main agenda behind a lot of... Um, not all of it, but a lot of that sort of authoritarian left's activism. Anyway, back to Bratby. So because of the anti-nuclear propaganda and the campaigning, regulators require multiple excessive layers of safety in nuclear plant design that needlessly pushes up costs. The regulatory process is complex, slow and cumbersome, and so takes years to complete. The long lead time between building and operation adds to expense and political uncertainty and is one reason why many recent proposals for nuclear power stations in the UK have been abandoned, leaving 
the twin power stations at Hinkley Sea and Somerset as the only ongoing project. To overcome some of these problems, the focus for future nuclear power stations has switched to SMR, small modular reactors. Now, SMRs have been in operation for over 60 years in submarines, aircraft carriers and icebreakers. But only in the last few years has serious attention been paid to developing land-based SMRs for commercial electricity generation. The advantages of SMRs uh, over current nuclear power stations are legion. They use relatively simple, proven technology. They can be manufactured in factories and constructed on site very rapidly. They are safer than current nuclear power stations. They occupy very little land and have little impact on the landscape. Some can be constructed underground, which is surely preferable to wind turbines and solar power farms. They provide generation that can be controlled to provide base load and load follow capability. And their output is not weather dependent. They are synchronous and the large rotating generators provide inertia, which is a positive benefit to the reliability and stability of the grid. They use very high energy density fuel and thus require a lot less land. A 440 megawatt SMR would require about 25 acres of land and would produce 3.5 terawatt hours of electricity per year, enough for over a million homes. To produce the same amount of electricity from solar farms would need 13,000 acres, 20 square miles of land, and from wind farms would need 32,000 acres, 50 square miles of land. Now, there are about half a million homes in Devon, and on average, each consumes around 1.5 megawatt hours of electricity per year. Therefore, Devon's domestic electricity needs could be met by a single 440 watt SMR occupying a small area of land, 25 acres. By contrast, a huge area of Devon's farmlands um, need to be covered in solar farms or wind turbines to provide the same amount of electricity. And even then, alternative sources of electricity would be needed for when the wind doesn't blow or the sun doesn't shine. Although the wind is blowing today, I apologise uh, for the effect it's having on the mic. So several competing designs are being developed around the world, ranging in size from tens of megawatts to 500 megawatts. And many, there are many different design concepts. Rolls-Royce, which has built seven generations of SMRs for use in nuclear submarines, is one contender with its design for a 440 watt megawatt SMR. And another is New Scale, an American company. And in the UK, it is envisaged that SMRs would be constructed on the redundant sites of closed nuclear and coal-fired power stations, i.e. on brownfield land where grid connections are readily available. So the big question is, why are several billion pounds a year being wasted on subsidising intermittent renewable energy generators such as wind and solar power? Surely, says Bradby, it would be better for the government to invest a fraction of this money in developing SMRs for deployment in the UK. The electricity from SMRs would be considerably cheaper than from intermittent offshore wind farms, which for some inexplicable reason seem to be the government's preferred option. Dominic here. Now I can tell you why there is so much opposition, because one group doesn't want to lose their subsidy, and that is more important to them than the best energy solution for their country and for the environment. Subsidy corrupts. So now I'm very keen to find out more about these small modular reactors and I'll be uh, doing some reading about them uh, going forward. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be back with another video very soon. And meanwhile, um, enjoy the sights of sheep wash.